Welcome to In The Zone with Chris Sander, where we talk lifestyle, entrepreneurship, self-care, and much more. So go grab a drink or a snack and come on back because it is now time to get in the zone. My guest today is founder and owner of Shoe Sean Media. Javen is a producer and content creator who has worked with Nickelodeon, global speaker Jeremy Anderson, and many more. I present to you Javen J. Cornelius. How are you, Javen? Good. Thanks good, for having good. me, man. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah. Listen, I just want to start off today with we met just like random, like mm-hmm. didn't know each other. At all. You have put something out on Facebook for all of us creatives just to come out together and just meet and greet. I attended. At first, I was like nervous. I was so nervous. I was like, should I go? Should I not go? I was like, oh, what do I do? I went, had the time of my life, and met so many cool people. And that's where I met you. Mm-hmm. And I just really appreciate you coming today and um, just giving your story. So first, I want to know about your background. Where did you grow up? Um, just give me your story. Man, I grew up in Seattle, Washington, and uh, that's where I first, you know, discovered that I wanted to be into filmmaking. Um, From there, um, really, when I decided to be a filmmaker, you know, there weren't no programs like they have now. They just had, like, you know, the UCLA's, the USC's, and the NYU's. Um, But uh, God opened the door for me to go to a historical black college university. Yeah. Where'd you attend? I went to Oakwood University. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have a cousin that goes there. Oh, like, okay. Well, she went there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got excited. No, it's all good, <laughs> man. And so um, that began my, you know, journey into filmmaking. So I'm curious to know, like, you know, being young and, through your adolescent years, what are some of the things that you struggled with or went through um, knowing, because oftentimes we know what we want to do, Mm -hmm. but you know, life still happens to us as a young person. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you went through um, being younger? I would say um, just being uh, open about being an artist. You know, a lot of times when people say they want to be an artist, the first thing their parents do is like, hey, look, you're not going to make any money you know, out of that. And so um, when I decided, the first thing I actually decided that I wanted to be was a hip hop producer. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know, like, and at the time I was working at a shoe shine stand. Um, and so I saved up wow. all my money, you know, and uh, bought a drum machine and I brought it home. And my dad was kind of like, you know, you're going to get bored of that. And, you know, I didn't think he meant it in a negative way, but I took it as like, oh, you're not supporting my dreams. And so... Uh, when I discovered filmmaking, I kind of kept it a secret to myself. And so that's a little bit about what I struggled with, you know, early on. And I just learned, you know, to just, um, you know, be around people who support it. Yeah. And so, yeah. So I'm curious to know, too, you know, as an artist, like oftentimes you know that you have this gift. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people don't know that you have it, but you know, it's mm-hmm. deep, it's rooted in you. Mm-hmm. Um at what age did you know that? Man, I would say I had a defining moment. Um, I knew uh, I was supposed to be a filmmaker. I would say um, my senior year, I would say I had that moment that, you know, I'm a man of faith. God validated it. I was actually doing my senior thesis uh, film and I was in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. Yeah. And I was doing this documentary down there. It was about black colleges and it was just showing black college life and it incorporated uh, Hurricane Katrina. But while I was down there, I was down there on my spring break. Uh, While I was down there filming, I heard that Bill Cosby was going to be in town. And this is before the whole, you know, this is before (laughs) he got all the backlash. But um, I was like, man, if I could get Bill Cosby in my documentary, you know, uh, I'm going to get an A on this project. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was just super passionate. And I remember uh, we heard where he was uh, on the last day of filming. And so we went over there and his truck uh, was surrounded by uh, just all the top, uh, uh, you know, news uh, stations and stuff. And I said to God, I was like, if you allow me to interview Bill Cosby, then I know this is the uh, path that you want me to be on to be a filmmaker. And so I knocked on his window 
And I got this on camera too. And so I knocked on his window and I was like, man, I'm a passionate filmmaker. I'm doing documentaries on um, black colleges and I know you donated <laughs> Spelman. And yeah. if you were just in my documentary and he was like, hold up, boy, just chill. <laughs> and so <laughs> like for real, it, it was like the real, you know, the real, the you for the, yeah, for, yeah. for the show. Yeah. You know, he was like, it was, uh, it was Mr. Hust Huxtable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, it felt like, I was like, wow. And so he was like, where's your cameraman? And I was like, he's right there. And he was like, tell him to get in the car. And I was like, oh, oh my gosh. Oh. And I was like, but wait, Mr. Cosby. And you know, when you go to film school, you know, you got all this stuff that your professors have pumped into your brain. Yeah. I'm like, you got to sign releases. He was like, man, just chill out. And he's like, I'm trying to put you on game. And I was like, whoa. And so, um, uh, my my videographer gets in the car, and uh, then Cosby says, "All right." Um, actually, what he did is before he allowed me to interview him, he uh, he gave me like this pop quest pop quiz on site about black colleges, so I knew all the answers. And he was like, "Get in the car," and so I interviewed him for my first project. Yeah, and from that moment on, I was like. God opened the door. So this is my calling. No matter what happens, I got to stay on the journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, You know, I love that. And I love that you are so driven mm -hmm. by God's grace and his presence in your life. Mm -hmm. We can't continue this interview without going there. Yeah. You've mentioned God. We're only five minutes in, and I love that. Mm-hmm. Where did that relationship grow and to where you have this strong presence of God within you? Um, I would say about seven years after college, um, I was developing, uh, you know, my production company. Yes. Um, Shushan Media. Yeah. Yes. Still, still, still small business. Um, but one of my clients uh, that I develop a relationship asked me, uh, before before hiring me, would I be interested in traveling the world and, you know, just documenting his company, like three days a week, uh, way more money than I was already making. Yeah, yeah. And um, and he was also a preacher. Okay. You know, but he was also a motivational speaker. Okay. And so during the time, you know, I was just a regular Christian dude, you know, just going to church, paying tithe, uh, just, you know, just easy going. Yeah. And um, I was like, man, I don't know, you know, I don't— Film and during that time, like film and, and like Christian stuff, it just didn't mix, you know. I, get I was what you're just saying. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. People are gonna see me this way. I'm not that <laughs> church video dude, you know. And so, um, I went. Uh, I accepted the contract, and when I started to document and travel, um, you know, a lot of the messages that they were speaking were messages that I heard early on in church, but it was just a little bit different, and I began to learn uh, more about God. Mm. And I would say that's where uh, my fire just really just sparked up because these guys, they would uh, speak during the week at high schools and prisons, you know, just straight motivation. They weren't allowed to say God a, a lot of Got times. Got you. Right. But then on the weekends, they would be at church. But the message was was the same. Yeah. It was just like if if you're down with God, you, you need to deny yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm hearing these messages while I'm filming. I'm like, man, have I already committed? Have you know, have I have I really fully committed? You know, because these guys are just committing their whole life to him. Right, right. You know, right. Uh seven days, you know, five at least three to four days a week. You know, they're just like speaking. And I would say that's where my relationship with God uh developed and it renewed and I got like a new fire to be like, all right. Yeah. You know, this is, you know, uh this is what God has called me to do. And I know he's present here in my life. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um I'm sure it's not easy for you, right? When you have a purpose and when the a God's in your life, it's not easy sometimes to mm -hmm. walk the journey because you don't know where he's taking you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where um I'm just curious to know like some of the things you had to face and go through from that experience of, you know, having to step out there on faith and really not know where he's going to take you, but you have to go. You have to be led there. Mm -hmm. I would say one of them was, you know, being asked to do things that you're not used to doing, like speaking. Mm -hmm. Like while we were on tour, um, sometimes we would end up getting an opportunity to speak at a college and it and it would be like a communication class. Yeah. And they'd be like, well, we're motivational speakers, Javen, but, you know, you're communications. So uh, you want to speak? 
And I would be like, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm a camera guy. Yeah, yeah. But um, but I was, you know, I had to think about that. I was like, this is it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not comfortable, uh, you know, to get to that next level. Right. You know, and so um, you know, that's where I learned back back to your question. Um Man, we got to go back to your question. I don't forgot. No, it's good. It's good. Look, everything's real here. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, I'm just curious to know, like, it's not easy to walk out in yeah. faith, right? Yeah. So how has that helped propel you, you know? Mm -hmm. I would just say walking into opportunities um, where people ask me to do it and I don't want to do it, mm -hmm. you know, that is that has just allowed me to grow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I respect that. Yeah. So- we're going to talk about Shoe Shine Media, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you have worked with Nickelodeon. Mm -hmm. You have worked with um, just so many different people. Um, Jeremy Anderson. Mm -hmm. And you've gotten the opportunity to pitch um, a show idea for Oprah, right? Oprah's own network, right? Yeah, the executive producers um, and their also reality stars, uh, they wanted to pitch some additional shows on the side of what they were doing. Gotcha, gotcha, mm -hmm. yeah. As far as the Nickelodeon, yeah, man, you know, it's crazy too because it's like, it was a, a it's amazing opportunity, but when I first got it, it, it did not have the same effect as it has now. Mm. Like, when I first got it, it was like, okay, now it's time. All right, get ready. You need to execute. But, you know, reflecting back, it's like, man, you know, like, how does that happen? Uh, where you're literally just sitting at home on the couch and you get a call and it's like, all right, we need you to be a DP for a whole entire Nickelodeon episode. Yeah. And so it was mind blowing, the whole process. Um, shout out to Keith Matthews of AVO Communications. Um, he is a uh, production company owner. Um, and he had his business going for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. Um, he's been doing it way longer than me. I'm 16, you know, 16 years. And, and so, um, they needed a director of photography who, uh, had like a run and gun style. And when, when, when I say that, I mean somebody who knows how to shoot fast. Yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. a lot of the projects I get, I'm going to a different country. Uh, you know, I'm hopping off an airplane. I got to be ready to shoot. Yeah. And so... Um, it was an amazing opportunity. Uh, they immediately patched me in with Nickelodeon. It was like, it was like, uh, they, they hired me one moment, but then the next moment, Nickelodeon and a whole bunch of producers were on a Zoom call <laughs> in my email, like, hey, these are our specifications. Um, this is what we need you to do. Um, and it was just amazing too, because I was able to recommend, uh, filmmakers from this area mm -hmm. who are talented. You know, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. That's right. You know, helping each other. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. about creating opportunities for people um, who have worked hard for them. That's right. And so, um, man, um, we, we shot that for uh, four to five days in the backwoods of Alabama. And it was just an amazing experience. And I kid you not, like, um, it was an opportunity that God, you know, opened the door. Like, I wasn't seeking it. Um, the only thing that I was doing is just doing what I was supposed to do. That is continue to work in my craft, put myself out there, let people know. Um, and that's how um, that producer uh, kind of came about. He already knew of me. We worked together a long time ago. Yeah. But one of his friends had always seen me post post on social media. Yeah. So he was like, hey, you should check in with Javen. So God worked it out. And, you know, those are kind of the specifics about the shoot. Yeah. I just think, I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes I think about the things that I do and I feel mm -hmm. like they're not good enough. Mm -hmm. I feel like I could have done better. Mm -hmm. I feel, you know, just very hard and critical of myself. Like, do you, do you face that? Yes, I do. And I've learned that a lot of artists do. Like, I saw that the guy who did the Space Jam cover, I forgot his name, um, he was critical of the cover and I, I didn't see anything <laughs> wrong with it but I've learned that's just who we are um, and it's also kind of uh, a hint to that you're in the right industry when you mm. care you know when you care about how it looks you know that's kind of a you know a reminder that you're in the right place yeah you, you want to get better if you don't care then there's something wrong that's true that's mm -hmm. true that's true mm -hmm. um, I also want to talk about on your social media mm -hmm. you give 
so many great tips for people who are starting out with their podcast or mm -hmm. just getting started. Like, first and foremost, a lot of times people don't have the heart to share with people mm -hmm. about those things if you know about it, right? Mm -hmm. um, especially in today's society, a lot of people want to say they're popping off on Instagram and social media and say, you know, it's me, I'm doing this and all this, but not helping other people, not serving other people, and not being a servant to other people. So I'm curious to know, like, you don't have to share that information to help other people, right? Mm -hmm. But you do. Yeah. Well, I do have to if I want to be a successful filmmaker, you know, and, and run a production company. Um, you know, a lot of things have changed uh, over the years, and I've just learned that um, you have to be willing to give away something, you know. Um, and I learned a lot from the companies that I work with work for you know uh they're giving away books and and, and you got to give value you know and so that's kind of like the mindset behind you know putting that stuff out there i'm not just here to do a video for you i want to help your business go to the next level so that's the mindset behind it yeah absolutely mm -hmm. i'm curious to know where that passion comes from though you know because it's like yeah you do have to help other people get somewhere and you want to help mm -hmm. yourself as well mm -hmm. but you have to have that heart and mm -hmm. i'm curious to know where that heart stems from you know what i'm saying like because that's real no one can take that away yeah you know what i'm saying i would say it's from a number of things it's it's from my mom uh you know back in the day you know a lot of people don't know they th you know a lot of people make fun of me because i sound really proper but man we started off in uh high point projects in seattle washington they no longer exist and my mom was, uh, and I hope I don't tear up, but my mom was uh, uh, giving free lunches after church on the weekend to our neighborhood. And so I saw my mom giving at an early age uh, to people who didn't have, you know, yeah, yeah. a lot. And, and, and then just me... Um, when I first came into this industry, it's very hard. That got me crying. Yeah, That's man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is very hard. I remember all the no's. Mm -hmm. um, man, I remember clearly one day I was uh, delivering uh, blueprints. And um, uh, I was doing this this job for this company called Ford Graphics. And um, I, I walked past this marketing office. Um, and there was nobody in there who looked like me, you know, mm, and, uh, mm. they were pitching, they were, they were putting together a pitch deck for a commercial. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Like one day I'm gonna do this. Yeah. Like, and this is like literally 20 years ago. And I just remember how they just snatched the graphics out of my hand and slammed the door. And I just stood there. I was just like, man, you know what I'm saying? And so oh I know what it feels like, uh, to, you know, just have nose and have doors slammed in your face. And I know what it's I know what it's like to be treated like you don't know something or you're never going to get somewhere. And so when I see a lot of people coming into the industry like myself, yeah, yeah. You know, I just do my best, whatever God allows me to do, um, to just, you know, offer some kind of words to them or even, you know, have them come along and shadow me for a while. And if they get really good, then, you know, hire them. So the all the no's that you've heard, and I, I'm glad you mentioned that because, like, even for myself, mm -hmm. I've gotten a lot of no's in my career. I started this field when I was 18. Yes. I'll be 25 this year. Okay. I've had a lot of no's starting right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, I started off in, at Fox 17. Mm -hmm. I had a reporter tell me that I would never be able to do what I want to do because I don't have what it takes. Mm -hmm. I remember asking to shadow her. Mm -hmm. She was rude. Mm -hmm. She said, I, "You're like you're." She didn't say this verbatim, because she. I was an intern at the time. Mm -hmm. I was 19 years old. Mm -hmm. But she said, "Okay," as if when I asked her if I could, you know, shout her. She said, "Okay," mm -hmm. and those things like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That will make you feel like it's you. And you're talking about yeah. earlier people slamming that door in, in your face. Mm -hmm. and it'll make it feel like it's you, right? Mm -hmm. But when did you get to a point where you realize, okay, nah? This ain't me. Like, mm -hmm. whatever other people's projections or insecurities are about whatever, they don't see you. When did you get to a point where you realize, nah, I still got this, and whatever just happened there, like, I can't let that stop me? I would say the confidence um, came from reading other people's stories. You know, um, I read this book once by George Alexander called Why We, Why we Make Movies. And... 
uh, in this book, it talks about all these successful independent uh, black filmmakers. And, you know, once I read their story, I learned that, okay, they got a lot of no's too. And this is not an industry like uh, delivery or nothing like that. You know, this is yeah. a, this a weird industry. Yeah, it is. You know, it's, um, it, it you get a lot of for those. The week. Yeah, it's not for the week. That's what it is, you know, and, and that's just a part of it. And so, um, and even now, you know, you still have to, I've, I've, experience bumps on the road in year 16 you know you just got to understand it's a part of it and you got to mm. take those no's and you got to allow them to feel feel you and um you just got to remain grounded in god and just keep pressing on yeah yeah mm -hmm. i'm curious also too like obviously you're a black man mm -hmm. and how have you just been in the position you're in now and um, having 16 years of experience, mm -hmm. you know, it's another thing. Sometimes it's not easy for us in this field. You know, yes. people sometimes don't see us. Uh -huh. They think we're just like the janitor. Yeah. And it's nothing wrong with being a janitor. Mm -hmm. But they treat us as if we're the lowest on the tolling pole mm -hmm. and as if we don't have anything to offer. Mm -hmm. If the ideas that we have cannot change anything or bring more awareness to something. Mm -hmm. How has that been? Have you had that experience? And if so, or if not, mm -hmm. um, what advice could you give to someone who's young, who's starting off, who may uh, face that, you know, where you have people mm. who don't really see you, uh, specifically black men, uh, because they think that you don't have anything to, of value to add? Yeah, I would say, you know, you got to take the punches and then you just got to show up. You know, that that's what it's all about. I've had times in the industry where I thought that, um, I was not getting opportunities because of my color. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what I did is I just, I just worked harder, you know, and you just got to be better than the next production company, you know? Um, and so that's how I've been able to tackle that. And it's okay. You could be African American and, um, and, and work for a predominantly white company, you know? Um, and, and as long as you, you know, you you do a good job and um you execute um those doors are going to open um because people like um people who could do an excellent job and keep their word mm. and so that's how I've overcome that and also so not letting like the color rule yeah you, you got to keep pressing on i mean yeah i remember when i first started out i would go into a place and i'd be trying to buy a light and people would give me pop questions like okay what type of color temperature i was like yeah i went to school man you know what i'm saying yeah, i know what i'm talking yeah. about i've had you know i've i've had those moments um but you know just continuing it to press on, you know, we cannot stop. We just got to keep going forward. This industry is tough. And and you don't get that in school. They don't tell you, you know, um, but it's entertainment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it, 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 expect, expect the worst. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I get you. I yeah. get you. Um, can we talk um, just a little bit about Shoeshine Media? I want to mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about it. What do you offer? Like, I want to talk more about what you offer with Shoeshine Media. If people need services or what? Yeah. Like, what do you offer? I mean, uh, right now, um, when I first started out, we were doing everything. We were doing weddings. You know, when you first start, you're doing anything to keep, you know, to keep your business going. But um, over the years, I've learned what we're really good at, and what we're really good at is, you know, doing stuff like podcast shows like this, uh, brand videos. And um, also just helping companies, you know, present their brand. Uh, one thing that we specialize in is just kind of, you know, we help speakers. Um, uh, we develop videos for them so they can show companies that they are qualified to speak at, like, you know, like a, a big conference or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So those are some of the things that we do. I would say the newest thing uh, that we offer is we're now training people how to do short form content. Um, and so it's really important that companies do short form content. And with the technology that you have now, with like iPhones mm. and you have all these gadgets and gadgets and apps that can help you. Um, we got into that. And that really came from also me just uh, reading a business management book. Um, I'm somebody who believes in continuing education. Yeah. And so every year a company has to have new services. And so before we were doing brand videos and commercials, but I was like, you know, 
we need to add something else. And so um, we've had people request in the past, did we offer those programs? So it only made sense to start it this year. We actually started it last year, but it only made sense to really start pushing it this year. Got you, got you. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's like, that's awesome, number one. And y'all mm -hmm. offer a lot. And again, like we are talking about earlier, I just appreciate the fact that the vision is to help people. Yeah. And that's huge in itself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I just respect that because a lot of people, especially in this industry, they don't want to help, you know? Yeah. I, I just think, I don't know. I don't know why they're like that, but I learned a long time ago, um, you don't, it doesn't look good when you show up to do a production and you're just doing all the positions. <laughs> mm. A lot of I watched the other day. I watched this guy uh, do a podcast, and I was like, he was operating three cameras and doing the switcher, and you know, I just was like, man, it just that's great. But you know, there's people who are at the beginning who should be in the room with you. Yeah, and so um, you know, I had a conversation with my wife. I was like, man, if we're gonna grow, you know, we got to you know, open it up. That's right. That's right. You know? Yeah. So I want to uh, switch gears. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about your wife and your family. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're a married man. Yes. You have, you have how many kids? Three. Here? Three kids. Yes. How is it being a father? Like, what is that like being a husband, a father? And especially, we'll talk about this, like trying to balance, mm -hmm. like, you know, film and stuff like that. Because sometimes you have to get up and go, you know? Yeah. What's that like? Man, it's amazing. Um, you know, of course, it comes with challenges, um, but God has really blessed our family. Um, but, you know, having a family um, just makes you be a more responsible filmmaker. Mm. You know, uh, you cannot um, be into filmmaking and, and just be into filmmaking. You also have to be a businessman, you know, because, uh, you know, there's a lot of people coming. It's like, I'm just an artist. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to deal with all of that. But... Um, that's really an excuse. You have to get out there and Ooh. learn the other side of it. Learn the business. You know, that's why you see so many rappers right now who are not happy, you know, because they didn't learn the business side. Yeah. You know, and so, um, and that's no diss on them. Just some, right, 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 just right. some rappers. Um, but, you know, being a, a father has taught me how to be more responsible. And it's also a blessing too, because uh, there's times when I've been able to um, you know, put money in my son's pockets, you know, for, you know, doing PA work or yeah. being grips and, and then showing them, you know, when I was their age, um, it was impossible to get your hand on a camera. Like around 2001, when I first was coming into this, it was, it was, film was expensive. It wasn't like it is now. Yeah. You know, you, you got $3,000, you can start a production company. But it wasn't like that then. And so being able to teach them things and show them things that I was not able to get my hands on, man, it just it just warms my heart. And I respect that too because, number one, you're holding your son accountable, right? Number one. Yeah. Because you're showing him what hard work is. Mm -hmm. And that is very essential. Number two, you're showing him what work ethic is mm -hmm. and how and where to place that dollar and make that grow mm -hmm. to your benefit. Yes. So, like, that's the greatest gift you can give anyone, you know? Yeah. And I think that's so cool. Um, what do you, I guess, as a, as a father, you know, you see your kids, what is something that you want them to learn from you? Man, that you could achieve anything if you put in the work, you know? Um, I, You know, I speak at... Um, juvenile detention centers, but I'm not yeah. able to put it on camera and stuff. Okay, yeah. And a lot of kids have dreams, uh, but they're not doing anything about it. They really think it's going to just happen. Mm. And so, um, back to your question, you know, I just, I just want them to know that, man, you can't achieve it, but you just have to put in some type of work. Right, You right. know, you got to... Uh, and so I share that with my sons. You know, my son, he wanted to be in the NBA, and I told him he did not... I was like, you don't want to be. <laughs> you think you do, but you don't. You know, you just want the end product. But um, I love that I'm able to share with them that, um, you know, you put in the work, you put in the plan, it can happen. Yeah. Because it happened for me. You know, just... And, and and 
and and I thank God that he opened the door for Nickelodeon because, you know, even our own kids, they they judge us. They're like, well, how good really are you? And so when Nickelodeon came in the door, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're like, oh, 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 okay. They're like, oh, okay, you the real deal now. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I went up to my son's school and all the kids was like, you work for Nickelodeon? I was like, yeah. They was like, nah. And I showed them pictures. They're like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> like my dad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so. It just shows your credibility too. Like now you can hush. You can be quiet. Put yeah. some respect on my name. <laughs> yeah. Like, yo, and for real, man, like, like God did that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he really did that. And so. Um, that's what I love to, you know, showing them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I just want to know too, in closing, we're wrapping this up. Um, what advice would you give your 25 year old self? Oh, wow. <laughs> Man, you know, it's, you know, I would say it's very important to be around your community. Number one, um, because sometimes you can feel isolated because you're talking to your wife about your next movie idea is important. Uh, just because she's not feeling it doesn't mean that it's not good. Or or just because she doesn't want to hear it doesn't mean, um, it, I would say, it doesn't mean that no one's interested. It's just you need to get around your community, right? And number two, um, it's important to live where uh, your industry thrives. You know, mm. you got Georgia and New York uh, and L.A. And so it's important, man, um, unless you want to be a trailblazer like Tyler Perry, which is very super hard. Yeah. You know, get, 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 go to the city um, where they're doing your stuff and get in the mix and you can learn a lot and, and just, just have patience and understand there's a period of learning. You know, this is a, a lifetime, you know, journey. Yeah. You know, um, the top directors are still learning. Um, and, and, and it's not an industry where you have to know it all to make it, but it's important to be around it. Yeah. You know? And so that's what I would, you know, get, my advice to 25 year old self is be around it and to anybody else, um, go to those cities and get in it. Mm -hmm. Receive as a 24 turning 25 year old <laughs> in the next month. Yeah. And for other people who are my age as well, who are, you know, just yeah. trying to figure it out. Yeah. Um, I want to ask this as well, because it's clear in our industry, you know, some people may know certain things, others may not, mm -hmm. but no one person knows everything. Yeah. And you must be humble enough to humble yourself because mm -hmm. you will not make it far mm -hmm. if you come in with an arrogant attitude. So I'm curious to know what advice you can give for people like that as well. Mm -hmm. You're coming into it like, I'm an artist. I just have to show up and it's yeah. going to work out. That's not yeah. how it works. I promise you it's not. No, <laughs> it, it's, it's not. Um, number one, you do have to remember remind yourself to be humble because you're going to get opportunities. Um, you know, there's been time when I come in, I've, I've come into a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? Doing what I'm doing, but I have to remember, you know, my values and you have to treat people. Um, that's very important. You have to treat people all the same, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you know, I treat the client who pays this X amount, high amount dollar as this client who's working on a small project. Um, everybody is important. That's right. And and, and I would say to uh, people coming in, um, you could learn a lot faster by volunteering. You know, a lot of people, um, I would say, are just want to be at the top. Mm. It's okay, you know, to volunteer at the bottom because uh, when you make mistakes at the top, it's just huge. It's major. It's hard to recover from. Um, and, and and let's not just focus on like the money aspect that you have to recover from. But when you make mistakes at the top, uh, the mental that you have to recover from. You know? Yeah, because you you have you have never experienced anything like that. Exactly. Like I've had moments where, you know, some really tough moments, you know, where I mean, this is like five years ago, but where I traveled to a whole different state and had a mistake happen. And you know what I'm saying? And it was hard to recover from that mentally to bounce back. Yeah, yeah. And so I've been very fortunate to have minimal mistakes. Uh, but I would say volunteering and getting around somebody who's already in the industry and just having that 
mindset of service. You know, um, if people would, if more people would be like that, we would see better stories versus one thing that really gets on my nerves now, <laughs> now, you know, I'm 41 years old now is seeing filmmakers on Facebook uh, begging for money. Number Bro, one, that's that's uh, tacky. Number one, yeah, and I understand it. Number two, man, uh, uh, being upset with people because they will not invest in their dreams, mm. right? Mm. Like, num- uh, one of my favorite motivational speakers is Dr. Eric Thomas. Yeah, and he says, uh, "It's your dream." You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that's you decided that that's what you want to do. So you need to be responsible that's for true. your dream. And 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 I one thing I see. Uh, a lot of filmmakers I know and some of them work for me you know they're asking people to do this and that and I'm just like no nah, you can't do that you have to understand like all right you want to make movies you need to start a production company go out there and do services for people so you can have money and don't be you know uh treating people who work for you like they need to invest in your dream like you need to be paying those people and so I realized you know early on like all right you know, because there was at a, a point where I was doing uh, films, but I have to, I have to return back to doing films after I run my production company to a certain point to where I'm having all the money I need to make the films yeah. that I want to make. And so volunteering um, is key. And that's how you learn that. Received. Yeah. Received. Yeah. Well, Javen, I just appreciate you stopping by. Where can people find you? Where can people find, you know... All your social media platforms, mm-hmm. social, um, Shushan Media, where can they find you? Mm-hmm. I would say the best place to follow me is on Facebook, you know, Javen Cornelius, um, and also on Instagram at Director Javen Cornelius. Okay, mm-hmm. perfect, perfect. Well, listeners and watchers, thank you for tuning in today. Um, until next time.